I'm here now to debunk uh, Christianity in less than a minute. And to do so, I'll need my first witness, Jesus of Nazareth. Okay, so Jesus teaches in the Gospel of John that the only true God is the Father. Who's that? The only true God is the Father. For those at the back, the only true God is the Father. If the only true God is the Father, then Jesus cannot be God. If Jesus is God, then means he's lying. If he's lying, it means he isn't God. Therefore, if Jesus says the Father is the only true God, he isn't God. If he's lying about the Father being the only true God, he isn't God. Therefore, Jesus debunks Christianity in less than a minute. Christians, you're welcome. At first glance, it might seem to imply that only the Father is the one true God, excluding Jesus from this divine identity. However, understanding this verse requires looking at the broader context of John's gospel, especially in the New Testament as a whole. In the Gospel of John, Jesus consistently presents a complex unity with the Father. For instance, in John 10.30, Jesus declares, I and the Father are one. This indicates a profound and unique relationship that goes beyond a mere prophet or messenger. Furthermore, in John 1.1, 1, 1, Jesus, referred to as the Word, is described as both being with God and being God, which sets the stage for understanding His divine nature. In John 17, 3, it should be read in the context of the unity and distinction within the Godhead. Jesus is praying to the Father, emphasizing the relational aspect of knowing God, which includes recognizing the Father as the one true God and also acknowledging Jesus Christ whom the Father has sent. This inclusion of Jesus in the knowledge necessary for eternal life highlights his essential role in the divine plan and his unique relationship with the Father. This verse does not diminish Jesus' divinity, but rather integrates it into the understanding of who God is. The knowledge of the one true God is incomplete without recognizing Jesus Christ, underscoring that this eternal life involves a relationship with both the Father and the Son. This verse points to the complexity of the Christian doctrine of the Trinity, where the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are three distinct persons, but one in essence.